runners. I'm your host, Ray Whitby. In this episode, we're going to look at starting running. It's top five tips that you need in order to get back into running, or if you've never done it before, what should you do? Biggest advice would be, if you want to start running, get out there and try it. See how you get on. But I think the five tips that I'll give to you now, possibly the key ones uh, that will at least get you orientated correctly so that it isn't complete mess on your very first run outdoors. So the first one would be, you've got to assess your physical state. Now, of course, it's no good getting up one morning and thinking, got to get fit, got to get healthy, whatever your aspiration may be, and to head out there and immediately start running without taking stock of where you're at. Now, you could be nursing injuries. It could be medical issues, uh, whatever it may be. You've got to at least make sure that you are healthy enough to survive your first run. And if in doubt, the key advice is always get medical advice. Seek a medical profession uh, that will sort you out and give you that green light. So after all, the worst thing that could happen is to get out there and exacerbate the problems and making things worse than they already are. So the second thing you want to worry about is avoiding cars. Now the second piece of advice, the second tip, will be don't worry about your running gear. It is important that you use proper running gear. Uh, and that goes for the trainers, uh, to the clothing that you're wearing. But all in all, for your very first run, it's almost a case of not concerning yourself so much with what you've got on, per se, within reason. You want something comfortable uh, on your trousers, on your legs, and you want something reasonable to run in. You know, some trainers, whatever they may be, should be fine, as long as they don't cause you major discomfort for the first run that you're trying to achieve. So make sure that you've got something that is practical for the run that you're going to try and do. The third tip would be to plan your route. If you started running, it's possible that you're not going to go very far. So what you need to think about potentially is uh, a short circular route that is close by to where you live. Nothing too extreme, nothing that takes you miles away from home. Somewhere where you can stop at any point and get back to your base easily. It may even be a case of taking the car somewhere, dropping it off, and then just running around a local park. As long as you can physically get back into the car and drive safely, of course, you just want to think about the reality of running. When you're getting into running, for the very first few runs, your body's not going to go, not going to know what to hit it. Uh, so you need to be very careful about the impact you're going to have on yourself and the ability to rescue yourself from the situation. Third tip, have a goal for every run, uh, but for the first one, for the very first run, you need to break it down. Best thing to do is if you can't do the distance, Look at the time. Now you, for the first run, you need to try and keep it realistic as possible. It may be a case of you're not even sure about what you physically can do, which is why I say for the very first run, getting into running, get out there and try it. Now in terms of the goals, I say it may be a case of you want to achieve a kilometer, but actually after 200 meters, you're so tired out, uh, you can't do it. And then you have to stop. Then you feel so bad about what had happened, you'll never get back into it again. And so you need to be realistic. Of course, in this tip, you need to choose your pace and make sure that it's achievable. Again, lots of people will give advice. Don't set off too hard. Don't get out there and sprint as though you're running for the bus. You've got to think about 
uh, what you can realistically achieve uh, for a given length of time. And it may turn out that what you need to do is run for a minute at a comfortable pace. Comfortable being where you're not about to fall over because of lack of oxygen getting into the system, that your legs are a creep, uh, creeping up with lactic acid, that you can't hold on to the pace for long, or your lungs are burning so heavily uh, you can't even breathe in and out. Certainly if you come across any of these conditions, you need to slow it down, take it right down to something that you can manage. Now, what you may find yourself doing is running for one minute and then walking for another minute and get back into running for a minute and walking for another minute. Now, within this tip, every run should have a purpose, whatever that may be. And I think in this one, you need to be a little bit careful about how much you're trying to achieve. It is far better to always be hungry for more. So I would say, be realistic, run around the block, keep it local, a couple of minutes of running, take a brisk walk, a couple more minutes of running, another brisk walk, and maybe after even half a kilometer, or even a kilometer, maybe call it a day and see how you feel. Now get back, do an assessment on your body, make sure that everything's working correctly and you're ready to go out again, maybe in the next day, the day after. So tip five, of course, even if you've never run before, uh, the primary uh, goal would be to ensure that when you're running, it's running with minimal amount of injury to yourself. So the first things for any run, apart from understanding what your goals are, would then be to warm up, to get out, do some light stretching, not deep lunges, but some very light stretching and uh, maybe a brisk walk for a couple of minutes. In fact, a lot of the apps that have come across are things like Couch to 5K, uh, they would advocate five minutes of brisk walking first and then going into whatever your running targets are. Get out there, run, see how you get on. So if you come across any kind of pain, any difficulties, all you gotta do is stop uh, and walk it off. And if it doesn't disappear from a walk, stop completely, get yourself back to home. Hopefully with the correct course, you won't be too far away. And then after you've finished your run, assuming that you do survive it, then you look at the cool down. And the cool down should really be, again, a brisk walk, just to get the body back to a resting heart rate. And then, again, do the self-evaluation. Try and you know, look at your body's response to it the next day. You know, how much pain is there? Where does it hurt? Where does it feel uncomfortable? You know, it may be the next day you've got to get out there and do a jog, a gentle jog. Maybe even wait a couple of days. But during that time, don't just stop completely, waiting for your body to heal itself. There's many other things you can do. Things like cross training. You know, go for a cycle, go for a swim, go for a massage. Just anything to ease out the aches and pains. When you go running, certainly when you're starting off, your body's gonna be impacted in so many different ways if you've not done it before, if you're not used to it. You've got to allow yourself time and understanding for your body to adapt into this new regime. And then hopefully after many, say, first runs, uh, you'll get used to it. Your body may even crave more after a while. For me, it was many months. It's building up the mileage or the kilometerage uh, until the point where I absolutely enjoyed it so much the body was generating its endorphins and became a high. Uh, but whatever your aspirations are, you've got to start carefully. Now I apologize in this video for looking around, but where I am shooting this video, uh, there's a lot of roads, a lot of traffic, a lot of pedestrians. Just trying to make sure I don't run anybody over or unfortunately get myself hit.
So uh, that's really the top five tips that we've got for getting you back into running or if you're starting off running. As a quick recap, assess your physical state. Two, you know, don't worry about the footwear or your running gear. That'll come in time. Just make sure it's comfortable and doesn't chafe uh, or doesn't rub too much. Three, have a rough plan of the route that you're going to do. Keep it local as you can. Four, yeah, think about a goal that's realistic. And it may be a case on your very first run or a couple of runs you are adjusting it uh, just to suit uh, the feedback on your body. Five, make sure you warm up, you cool down before and after the run. And then post run, make sure you're getting uh, you know, a good amount of rest as well. And we can go into some of those points in greater detail, but one, let me know. Let me know what kind of things that you found useful on your very first runs uh, when you started off. If you can remember back that far, what was the key tips and advice that you were given or you found out for yourself, put them in the comments below. And whilst you're there, you might as well click and subscribe and join the Aspiring Runners community. So uh, thank you for joining me in this video. Hopefully, catch you next time. Take care.